This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motor news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Wee Gamboa. And I'm Tin Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the continuous issues on e-trikes on major thoroughfares. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart Sportion centers on rules regarding traffic lights. This week's Pai Juper shall be the limit on the number of passengers in PUVs. Showcase this week shall have a van from Hyundai, the Staria 7-seater. While for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2024 Philippine Rally Cross Series Round 4. All these plus the latest use in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are this week's episode of Motoring Today. Join us! So, you want a new car but don't know what model you like? You want a new car but don't know who will give you the best deals and offers? And before you can make a final choice, you'll need to book a few test drives and visit so many dealers and showrooms. For all these, save yourself the time and effort. Just go to one convenient venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival on May 9-12 to at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Take your pick from sedans, SUVs, multi-purpose vehicles, vans and pickups, even hybrids and electric vehicles. BYD, Chang'an, Ford, GAC, Geely, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Jator, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Suzuki, and Toyota will be there to show you what they have and let you test drive their models. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival in cooperation with SM Offices and the SM Mall of Asia Complex, May 9-12. to Your one-stop shop for all the latest models. No need to go anywhere else to get the car you want or need. See you there! Go beyond limits with the all-new Mitsubishi Triton. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Two shuttle buses ferrying personnel of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority were caught inside the EDSA busway lane. According to news reports, the drivers of the shuttle buses showed those who apprehended them a MMD memorandum order dated February 20, 2024, included a provision that said MMDA shuttle buses designated for employee transportation are allowed to access the EDSA bus carousel lane. The incident prompted MMDA Acting Chairman Romando Artes to hold a press conference to clarify that the February 20, 2024 memorandum contained an error. 
The pertinent provision should have read, MMDA shuttle buses designated for employee transportation are not allowed to access the EDSA bus carousel lane. At the press conference, Artes explained that the memorandum was issued to remind MMDA personnel on who and for what purpose they would be allowed to use the EDSA bus lane, which was the subject of an earlier memorandum issued September of 2023. In issuing the 2024 memorandum, the word not was inadvertently deleted, he said. Artes clarified that MMDA employees are not allowed in the bus carousel lane except on Mark Beagles responding to an emergency situation or performing operations inside the exclusive lane for buses. Should ambulances need to be ferrying patients to be allowed use of the EDSA bus lane? What about ambulances rushing on an emergency call towards a patient needing medical attention such as victims of road and other accidents or persons suddenly having a heart attack? This is now being looked at by the MMDA, according to Acting Chairman Romando Artes. Yung mga ganun po siguro kailangan natin i-review. Aralin na dapat po ba meron lamang sakay na pasyente yung gagamit ng bus lane. Paano po kung susundo sila ng pasyente? Uh, pwede po ba? Yung mga ganun po. So, kailangan po natin aralin bago tayo gumawa ng necessary adjustment. Artes was commenting on reports of ambulances being flagged down on the EDSA bus lane with sirens and blinkers, but not without patients on board. According to reports, some of the ambulance drivers admitted that they were not on an emergency call and were merely trying to avoid traffic. Others, however, claimed they were rushing on emergency to get to patients. News reports quoted in forces from the DOTR Special Action and Intelligence Committee for Transportation that ambulances can't use blinkers and sirens if not transporting patients. Transportation authorities have been cracking down on ambulances misusing their blinkers and sirens and getting on EDSA bus lane. The Land Transportation Office plans to use videos recorded by CCTV Network of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority to go after motorists violating traffic regulations in the National Capital Region. According to news reports, under an agreement, MMDA will forward videos of traffic violations to the LTO with details of the date and time of the violations as well as the license plates of the vehicles recorded. An ABS-CBN report quoted LTO Chief Vigor Mendoza II as saying, the cameras installed by MMDA are being used to monitor traffic situation, especially in major thoroughfares in Metro Manila. We might as well use them to run after erring motorists who would openly defy traffic safety rules. Mendoza said the video recordings would be used as basis for show cost orders to be sent to erring motorists. Before the end cap was ordered suspended by the courts, the MMDA and other LGUs used CCTV recordings to immediately cite and fine erring motorists for traffic violations. Construction of the next phase of the Central Luzon Lake Expressway project would resume in the second quarter of the year. This was announced by Zambales Governor Hermogenes Emdana Jr., who chairs both the Regional Development Council's Sectoral Committee on Infrastructure Development and Regional Peace and Order Council in Central Luzon. Ebdane said that the right-of-way issues that have delayed were resolved during a meeting with landowners and farmers affected by the construction of the tollway. The former secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways facilitated the talks with the landowners and farmers. Also in the talks were officials of the DPWH Unified Project Management Office Road Management Cluster 1 and the National Economic and Development Authority, as well as Mayor Cristino M. Oson of Quezon, Nueva Ecija. Ebdana said the affected landowners have already dismantled the barricades they set up along the 35.7-kilometer route, part of the Luzon Spine Expressway network extending from Ilocos to Bicol, consisting of five contract packages, three of which have already been completed. The phase of the Central Luzon Link Expressway projects from Tarlac City to Cubanatuan has been open to motorists and for now being used by motorists free of toll. And those are the latest news developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines.
Beginning April 15, drivers of e-vehicles like e-trikes and e-bikes caught on 19 major thoroughfares, including national, circumferential, and radial roads of Metro Manila, will be apprehended and penalized. Where e-trikes are banned, C1 Recto Avenue, C2 President Carino Avenue, C3 Araneta Avenue, C4 EDSA, C5 Katipunan CP Garcia, C6 Southeast Metro Manila Expressway, R1 Ross Boulevard, R2 Taft Avenue, R3 Eslex, R4 Shaw Boulevard, Ortigas Avenue, R6 Magsaysay Boulevard or Aurora Boulevard, R7 Quezon Avenue or Commonwealth Avenue, R8 A. Bonifacio Avenue, R9 Rizal Avenue, R10 Del Pan Marcus Highway MacArthur Highway Elliptical Road, Mindanao Avenue and Marcus Highway. Also prohibited on these thoroughfares by MMDA Resolution No. 24022 Series of 2024 are tricycles, pedicabs, pushcarts, and kuliglegs. The e-trikes and e-bikes will also be impounded if their drivers are found to have no driver's licenses. This is an indication that authorities will be moving to mandate that e-trikes can only be driven by licensed drivers. Sellers and distributors have been marketing the e-trikes as modes of transport that need no licenses to operate on the road. The MMDA resolution also directed local government units to issue ordinances regulating the use of e-trikes in respective jurisdictions, including identifying roads where these are prohibited. The MMDA and the Metro Manila Council, composed of mayors of the municipality and cities making up the National Capital Region, cited the many accidents caused by e-trikes on roads. The chaos and congestion on the streets they exacerbate with their unruly drivers who ignore all traffic regulations as reasons for implementing the ban. Even as the ban is set to be implemented, many are still arguing against its implementation. The Move Us One Coalition advocating for safety, more humane, and more inclusive public transportation in the Philippines questioned the government's contention that e-trikes caused many accidents. They cited MFDA's own Metro Manila Accident Reporting and Analysis System findings that in 2022, bikes or e-bikes or pedicabs are only involved in 2.05% of road accidents in the metropolis, 4.84% of accidents with fatalities, and 5.88% of accidents non-fatal injuries. In contrast, the Maras reported that 52.48% of road accidents involved private cars and 22.59% involved motorcycles. The question implied, why ban e-trikes when more accidents are caused by private cars and motorcycles? But viral videos of e-trikes going against the flow of traffic, stopping in the middle of yellow boxes at lighted intersections, being driven by pre-teens gives one pause that perhaps a strict implementation of the ban is needed. And some can argue that any number of accidents, any number of fatalities or injuries or damage to property can never be too small not to do something to prevent them. Others, however, take a bigger view from the issue. Ira Cruz, director of Alt Mobility PH, advocates of sustainable and inclusive transport, says the popularity of e-trikes is a manifestation of government's failure to answer the basic needs of ordinary Filipinos for mobility. Cruz asserts that it is unacceptable for government to focus its energy on restrictions rather than solutions. The Move Us One Coalition and Alt Mobility PH both believe that e-bikes and e-trikes could help the country meet its environmental objectives. Alt Mobility PH's Cruz is urging the president to direct national government agencies to act together to address the mobility problems of people. That's our morning forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Into new heights. So, you want a new car but don't know what model you like? You want a new car but don't know who will give you the best deals and offers? And before you can make a final choice, you'll need to book a few test drives and visit so many dealers and showrooms. For all these, save yourself the time and effort. Just go to one convenient venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival on May 9-12 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. 
Take your pick from sedans, SUVs, multi-purpose vehicles, vans and pickups, even hybrids and electric vehicles. BYD, Chang'an, Ford, GAC, Geely, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Jator, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Suzuki, and Toyota will be there to show you what they have and let you test drive their models. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival in cooperation with SM Offices and the SM Mall of Asia Complex May 9-12. to Your one-stop shop for all the latest models. No need to go anywhere else to get the car you want or need. See you there! You are back with us here on Motoring Today, and we now have this week's important motoring tips. Starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Isa sa mga pinakamahalagang traffic rules ay ang pagsunod sa traffic lights. Pag ikaw ay pedestrian or driver, you should always learn how to obey the traffic lights. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Bang Choper this week. Kapayo Choper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico, isang kapanyo Choper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong super lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, super. So, you want a new car but don't know what model you like? You want a new car but don't know who will give you the best deals and offers? And before you can make a final choice, you'll need to book a few test drives and visit so many dealers and showrooms. For all these, save yourself the time and effort. Just go to one convenient venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival on May 9-12 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Take your pick from sedans, SUVs, multi-purpose vehicles, vans and pickups, even hybrids and electric vehicles. BYD, Chang'an, Ford, GAC, Geely, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Jator, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Suzuki and Toyota will be there to show you what they have and let you test drive their models. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival in cooperation with SM Offices and the SM Mall of Asia Complex May 9-12. to Your one-stop shop for all the latest models. No need to go anywhere else to get the car you want or need. See you there! If you're having problems sa cars, you know, if there's any problems, especially with the paint, if you wanted to have the paint corrected, uh, just let us know, just give us a call, drop by our shop, so we could assess, para we could uh, show you and uh, give you yung gagawin sa cars nyo, especially for the paint job. So we could detail the car and probably put ceramic coating on it. Our shop also offers ceramic coating, interior, exterior, engine, and um, Glass detailing, we also um, offer premium car wash. We also do paint job, certain panels na kailangan natin repaint. So we also do that. We also do um, a wash over paint also for cars. So.
Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. In motorsports news, the third leg of the 2024 Philippine Rally Cross Results Round 3 drew a healthy number of racers to a new and challenging venue. The CDS Off-Road Playground at the Arden Botanical Garden in Trece Martires, Cavite. Caloy Calica Top Group 1 of the Daytime Leg 3, setting the quickest cumulative time from two timed runs and a rather dusty and gravelly course. Coming in second in Group 1 was JP Polintan. Mark Desales was third quickest in the group, although as a non-scoring competitor, which meant fourth quickest Rolando Texon earned the 18 points for a third place finisher. Vivi Mendiola top Group 2, dropping Louis Camacho down to second with Edsel de Dios in third. Vivi Mendiola and Louis Camacho were again first and second in Group 2 competition, with Paul Santos joining them on the podium in third. Vivi Mendiola scored a hat trick of sorts by also topping Group 4, beating by some 8 seconds the cumulative time of Ricardo Di Licajo, who finished second. Third was Paul Santos. Paulo Santos just edged Dindo de Jesus by 34 hundredths of a second to top the open class. A very close third was Ricardo Di Liaco. The RWD class also saw a close contest among Easy Ligaya, June Magno, and Devor Andres, finishing first, second, and third, respectively. Paulo Santos also topped the AWD class. Mike Reyes finished second, with Alfonso Sioson in third. Luis Camacho dominated the pickup class, which saw more entries in the third leg. Boboy Rabe was second quickest while Danny Orian ended up third. DJ De Guzman just pipped Luis Camacho's cumulative time by six hundredths of a second in the UV class. Farther down, the timesheets was Danny Orian in third. More on the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. This race weekend takes us to the CCP Open Grounds for highlights of the June Espino Memorial Rallycross 2024 Philippine Rallycross Series Round 4, one of the exciting sidelights of the 2024 Manila International Auto Show. We are here today at the CCP Open Grounds for Round 4 of the Philippine Rallycross Series. This is the dedicated to Sir June Espino of AAP and this is this uh, June Espino Memorial Cup happening here today at the CCP Open Ground. It's been a while since rally cross event happened here at the CCP Open Ground. Since Austin and I started this way back 10 years ago, there hasn't been any other event here since the other past organizers. No? So this is history that we're doing here, once again, that we are here alongside the Manila International Auto Show. We want to expose to the public what the Rallycross series is all about. No? Uh, normally, we're in uh, far places where people can't uh, see us. And being here in the metro brings closer to all the motorheads out there. No? Again, we have renewed our um, partnership with Isuzu. As you can see, our uh, Isuzu D-Max here in the background, driven by Luis Camacho. No? It's, uh, Isuzu has been our partner for uh, a long three, four years already and um, they continue to support our city so expect more from our partnership. We'll bring in more drivers, bring in more Isuzu D-Max, bring in more of the Isuzu products here. If you guys want a shotgun ride, we'd be happy to ride you guys in our Isuzu D-Max in our series. Our partnership with the Philippine Rallycross Series is more than just a sponsorship. It is a testament to our belief in the spirit of motorsports in the Philippines. As with previous years, we'll be showcasing our Isuzu D-Max, which has been champion in its category, showing its true power and performance on the Rallycross tracks, embodying the spirit of those who live their lives and determination and drive. A perfect combination for the adventurous at heart. The D-Max embodies the spirit of those who seek to challenge the limits 
with its reliable 4JJ3 blue power engine, durable suspension, the D-MAX is designed to excel in this kind of sport. Very thankful ako na ngayon pang third year ko nang dinadrive tong Isuzu D-MAX na very proud din ako na nasa Isuzu team din talaga ako. Very supportive sila na nandiyan sila lagi. Every race ko, din nila pinapabayaan yung team. Lagi silang nakasuporta sa amin. Our next event will also happen this April, no? We'll do the rally naman, no? Our round one for the rally. This will happen at the end of the month, the last weekend of April. It will be in Tarlac. We'll update you guys soon on our Facebook page. And uh, for the Rally Cross Series, I think we go back on May, no? Uh, we'd love to have it here, but I think we're going to be heading back to uh, CBS Off-Road Playground at the Ardent Botanical Estate. For, for more updates, uh, we'll let you guys know on our Facebook page. We'd like to invite all the motorsports enthusiasts, supporters, and competitors to come join the 2024 Philippine Rally Cross and together let us embrace the spirit of adventure and thrill of the race. Thank you very much. Rally and Rallycross enthusiasts were happy for the chance to witness a round of the 2024 Philippine Rallycross Series held just within Metro Manila. And that's New Six World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. So, you want a new car but don't know what model you like? You want a new car but don't know who will give you the best deals and offers? And before you can make a final choice, you'll need to book a few test drives and visit so many dealers and showrooms. For all these, save yourself the time and effort. Just go to one convenient venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival on May 9-12 to at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Take your pick from sedans, SUVs, multi-purpose vehicles, vans and pickups, even hybrids and electric vehicles. BYD, Chang'an, Ford, GAC, Geely, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Jator, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Suzuki, and Toyota will be there to show you what they have and let you test drive their models. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival in cooperation with SM Offices and the SM Mall of Asia Complex, May 9-12. to Your one-stop shop for all the latest models. No need to go anywhere else to get the car you want or need. See you there! Limits, where the all-new Mitsubishi Triton Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. This showcase checks out what Hyundai's top-of-the-line Staria offers to those looking for a premium van or MPV. Hyundai made a name for itself as well as for other automakers from South Korea with Starix back in the day when Filipinos didn't yet trust vehicles made from that part of the world. Back then, the Starix, even second-hand ones, became popular mainly from word of mouth from buyers who found the people who were an affordable, reliable, and very comfortable MPV or van for the family. Today, people no longer think twice about buying a Korean brand car and design. Performance, modern functionality come into play more than price when it comes to choice of model or variant, from sedans to SUVs or crossovers and MPVs or vans. 
In the premium MPV or van segment, Hyundai now offers the Staria, which replaces the Star X in the local market. The Staria comes in five variants from the entry-level Hyundai Staria 2.2 CRDI6 MT priced at 1.56 million pesos to the top-of-the-line 7-seater 2.2 CRDI Premium Plus 8AT all-wheel drive 7-seater priced at 3.03 million pesos. The CRDI Premium Plus 8AT all-wheel drive 7-seater stands out in among MPVs and family vans because of its very modern and futuristic design from the front to the side and the rear. The fascia is quite distinct with a huge grille flanked by LED matrix headlights contrasted by the thin LED DRL light strip running across the whole width of the front. The silhouette is also quite distinct with a smooth slope up front and the near right-angled top at the back. Quite distinctive is the huge expanse of tinted glass running all the way from the front to the rear. The look is also quite modern from the back with the LED combination lamps lining the corner. The top of line Staria features dual LED headlamps with low and high projection and auto light control function and rear LED fog lamps. The large side mirrors can power adjust and fold and feature integrated repeater lamps. It can also be distinguished from its siblings by glossy black front grille with copper accents, 18-inch alloy wheels, rear spoiler with high mount stop lamp, chrome outside door handles and the expansive powered sunroof. The huge sliding doors on the side are powered, so is the tailgate. The Staria takes up a large space on the road, 5,253 mm long, 1,970 mm wide and 1,990 mm tall, with a 3,273 mm long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 186 mm. This translates into a very large and roomy cabin, especially for the top-of-the-line seven-seater with four captain's chairs for the driver and front and second-row passengers. The third row features a bench seat for three. Upholstered in premium Napa leather, the seats are well bolstered and cushioned. The captain's chairs in the second row are particularly comfortable. Hyundai calls them premium relaxation seats and they slide and recline electronically, are ventilated and feature ottomans or folding leg rests. The driver and front passenger also get power-adjusting seats with the driver also benefiting from lumbar support. The top end Staria cabin is well appointed with fit and finish that can only be described as refined and premium. There is a 10.25-inch TFT LCD display for the instrument cluster setting up the dash in front of the driver. On the center of the dash sits the 8-inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system that comes with AM FM radio, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth with voice recognition, and on the top of the line Staria, a Bose surround sound speaker system. Other comfort and convenience features include smart key entry and push-button start, overhead console LED lamp, mood lamp, electrochromic rear-view mirror, sun visors with illuminated warranty mirrors, central door locking and automatic air conditioning system. For a large MPV or van, the Staria is easy to drive or operate. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features buttons for the audio as well as smart cruise control. The driver gets a great view of the road up front and to the side with the expansive windshield and side windows. A surround view monitor helps with maneuvering in crowd or narrow streets. This is helped along by a blind spot view monitor. Parking is helped along by parking distance warning. The Staria is powered by a 2.2-liter or 2199cc CRDI VGT engine that generates 177 horsepower and 430 newton meters of torque. This is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission with an all-wheel drive system. Driver has the option to choose drive modes, Eco, Normal, Smart, and Sport. Panel shifters behind the steering help driver get some control over gear shifts. The Staria is a comfortable MPV or people mover with a suspension system featuring McPherson struts with coil spring in front and rigid 5-link axle and coil springs in the rear. Stopping power comes from a brake system featuring 18-inch discs in front and 17-inch discs in the rear. The top-of-line Staria is equipped with Hyundai SmartSense, a suite of advanced driver assist and safety features that include lane keeping assist, lane following assist, forward collision avoidance assist, manual speed limit assist, forward collision avoidance assist, junction, surround view monitors, front and rear parking distance warning, rear occupant alert, and blind spot view monitor. The Staria is also equipped with electronic stability control, anti-lock braking system, hill start assist control, and electronic parking brake with auto hold. Other standard safety and security features include dual side and curtain airbags, child lock, child anchor, tire pressure monitoring system, and immobilizer.
more and more stars can be seen on the roads these days. This should not come as a surprise to those who like the modern looks and well-thought-out features of Hyundai's People Mover. That's our featured vehicle of this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. So, you want a new car but don't know what model you like? You want a new car but don't know who will give you the best deals and offers? And before you can make a final choice, you'll need to book a few test drives and visit so many dealers and showrooms. For all these, save yourself the time and effort. Just go to one convenient venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival on May 9-12 to at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Take your pick from sedans, SUVs, multi-purpose vehicles, vans and pickups, even hybrids and electric vehicles. BYD, Chang'an, Ford, GAC, Geely, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Jator, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Suzuki, and Toyota will be there to show you what they have and let you test drive their models. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival in cooperation with SM Offices and the SM Mall of Asia Complex, May 9-12. to Your one-stop shop for all the latest models. No need to go anywhere else to get the car you want or need. See you there! Welcome back to Motoring Today! The auto industry takes center stage. Over four days, the Manila International Auto Show drew a record number of visitors to the World Trade Center and the SMX Convention Center Manila to check out many of the latest vehicles now available locally. This year, we have 29 brands at the two venues. So those who are looking for their next uh, new car or those who just want to experience the latest in the auto industry, it's here at MIAS. Viewing close to this year's MIA theme, Bridging the Future, Many of the vehicles showcased were hybrid and full electric vehicles, many of them from new automotive brands entering the local market. Many of the participating brands launched full electric vehicles. MG Philippines showcased the full electric premium SUV crossover, the LS7, aside from other newly launched models. We are 12 vehicles strong displaying here in, in, in MIA. So we're starting with, of course, the highly anticipated Cyberster. Then we also have the MG4X Power. Then we have the MG ZS, the EV version of the ZS. The MG1 is also here, which we just launched a couple of months back. The MG5, we also have preview models like the MG7, the RX9, the G50, the MIFA 9, of course, our luxury van. And of course, we're also launching our luxury EV line, which is the LS7. It's actually open now for order taking. So for those who are interested, they can reserve. It's at uh, 4 million if, if, if you're interested. You just go to our select MG dealers and they can avail or they can reserve or pre-book uh, the LS7. Hyundai took the opportunity at the MIAS to introduce the brand's N line of vehicles. N is actually our high-performance sub-brand and it promises to provide our Filipino customers authentic, accessible, and accelerating production cars. The first two N models from Hyundai, the Elantra N and the Ionic 5N were showcased at the MIAS. One of the N products that we featured is a full electric vehicle, which is the Ionic 5N. This has a capacity of churning out 650 horsepower up to a maximum of 250 kilometers per hour. The Elantra N is now officially open for reservations here in the Philippines and will come in four colors, black, white, performance blue, and gray. This will sell at 2,738,000 pesos. This comes with a 2.0 turbocharged engine matched with an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. This can turn out 276 horsepower while producing also 392 newton meters of torque. Among the crowd drawers at the Mias was Jatour, many drawn by the T2 4x4 SUV as well as the dashing PHEV. 
Today we're showcasing the latest of its innovation, our Jatur T2. That is a 4x4 off-road vehicle and it can be used in all terrain. It is called the Intelligent 4-Wheel Drive of Jatur Auto Philippines. And also we are launching the Jatur Dasing PHEV, the full hybrid electric vehicle. Tangan Auto Philippines showcased its growing local lineup of SUVs and crossovers, led by the newly launched CS15. Today we are launching the new CS15, the latest addition to our growing SUV lineup. So it's a, a crossover compact SUV at a super price and super spec. GAC Motor Philippines climbed onto the crowded hybrid bandwagon by launching the MCU Hybrid at the Mias. Uh, we're here now at the booth. We're showcasing the full GAC Motor lineup from the newly launched M8 and M6 Pro that we launched in February and March of this year. But now at Mias, we launched something new, uh, the all-new MCU Hybrid. So uh, it is our first entry for GAC Motor in the Philippines to have an electrified vehicle. And what's so great about it, from the regular MCU GL that you know, is that it is now at a very powerful 2.0 liter engine, and of course, with a hybrid capacity of 134 kilowatts, giving you a full output of a power of 180 horsepower. Nissan Philippines brought the Aria, the full electric SUV packed with the latest in connectivity technology, to the Mias, highlighting the brand's vision for the future of electrified mobility. It's the Nissan Aria. Uh, it's a, actually a preview of the model right now. It's a way of showcasing the technology of Nissan in terms of EV leadership. So this is a full BEV vehicle. It's an SUV. It's powered by an E-Force powertrain. It's driven by two uh, electric motors. Among the more crowded and busy corners at the Mias was the Suzuki booth. Aside from showcasing its popular vehicle lineup that included the three- and five-door Jimny, Espresso AGS, and the XL7 Hybrid, Suzuki also hosted a lot of fun activities for families and individuals visiting its booth. We would like to invite all of you to do this drive and see our model. Many automotive companies formally introduced their brands and launched their vehicle lineup at the Mias. This included JMC Philippines, a member of the Ostara Group, which launched and showcased the Grand Avenue and the Vegas. This is the JMC Grand Avenue. It has a 2.3-liter turbo diesel engine with 177 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. So we have four variants. We have the 4x2 manual, 4x4 manual, 4x2 automatic, and 4x4 automatic. The automatic version, by the way, has an 8-speed automatic transmission. Adding spice to the brand launch is the preview of JAC Motors' new vehicle lineup. Today was a very exciting day for us. Philippine motoring industry today marks the launch of the uh, Jack brand under Astara Philippines. And it's uh, really, really a big thing. It's a global partnership between Jack and Astara and they chose the Philippines as the first market to launch the brand. We launched the SUVs, uh, the JS4, uh, the JS6, and the JS8 Pro. Um, these are all going to be available in the next few months in the Philippines. We'll have separate launches for all of them. Uh, we also previewed two pickups, the T8 Pro and the T9. Uh, these are also going to be available in the next few months. Newcomer GWF Philippines showcased its local lineup that included the full electric Aura 03 EV. We have five vehicles on display. So we have two EVs and two ICEs. The EV natin are, of course, yung pinakita natin today. Yung ni launch din, pati price is the Aura 03. And we have two PHEVs on preview. The Havel Manglong PHEV and the Wei Gaoshan PHEV. Then yung mga ICE naman natin are the Tank 300, our accessible luxury off-roader, and the Havel M6. 
Mitsubishi Motors Philippines continues to put the spotlight on the Triton, staging the pickup to highlight all the possibilities for adventure and fun that can be experienced with a lifestyle vehicle. At the MIAS Mitsubishi Motor Philippines, Takeshi Hara president revealed one problem with a Triton that is both welcome and unwelcome. We are appearing uh, Triton, the all new Triton. It's uh, our super great, a uh, brand new model, especially S3 top twin. Uh, now we have released, and uh, we get a very great reputation from the customer. But sorry to say, lack of the stock. So bit delay and uh, we could see the very long waiting queue. But uh, now uh, Astrid has arrived and then uh, now we try to sell more GRS and GRS and then uh, uh, try to meet uh, customer demand in the Philippines. And also all over, you know, our expander and all SABs and all full lineup and then try to uh, deliver our attractive model to the all Filipino customers. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now it is 37th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with the live book of Bibel Triple Boat, Road Safety. In honor of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Wee Gamboa. And I'm Tin Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.